before Yahweh, and you won't need the Ark of the Covenant. I noticed that in the Millennial Temple. You don't need the Ark of the Covenant. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now watch this, verse 22. I'll bring them back. But when, when did Yahweh say? I'll bring, I'll bring Yehuda back, and then I will make Ephraim beg Yehuda to receive citizenship and status. Is that what it says? No. It says, I'll bring them back, and guess what? I'll bring them back at the same time. I'm not going to bring them back so as to leave Ephraim out in the cold, begging Yehuda to change their immigration, change their policy, change their legal status, find a way to make Jews into Jews, and to make them citizens. No. He said, I'll bring both back as equal heirs in Israel in that time, in that day, in that way, by my own hand, when then, when then, in that day, in that time, when then, by my own hand, and I will not have the Jews go to Israel in 1948 and then have Ephraim get on their knees like third class sec or second class beggars and beg for the thing that I have already told them is their inheritance right. through the everlasting eternal covenant. Yep. So wait a second, Rabbi, something's not clicking here. There are Jews back in the land, aren't there? Yep. And yet we have Ephraimites running to Judah today through these self-proclaimed leaders who are going to be used to change Israeli immigration, change Israeli policy, change Israeli citizenship laws, change Israeli immigration and naturalization laws, and they're going to wheel and deal, and they're going to wheel Yeshua down the river and sell out. I've entitled this message, The Great Ephraimite Sellout. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Those are the nations. Carry Judah and Ephraim. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's a different context. That's not a two house context. Okay? We'll talk about that later. Okay? Good question. Okay. But that's not in a two house context. So here we are. So Yahweh says, I will bring them back together. But wait a second. We know there are Jews in the land since 1948. We know that. We can't pretend they're not there. But now the danger is we have Ephraimites who know who they are as Ephraim, but they think that they are Yahweh's David Koresh. They are Yahweh's Joseph Smith. They are Yahweh's Ellen G. White. Some kind of self-proclaimed visionary or some kind of self-proclaimed seer and that they are Yahweh's chosen vessel to bring Ephraim home. And that's where the danger is. That's where the danger is. Because when they bring you back, you know what they're going to do? They're going to make you bow and worship and kiss at the feet of Orthodox Judaism because they hold the key. Orthodox Judaism holds the playing cards. They hold the Department of the Interior. Without Orthodox Judaism, you can't get home right now. Hello? Ephraim? Ephraim? Hello? You can't get home right now without Orthodox Judaism. So either Yahweh is going to bring you back or you're going to have to kiss up to the feet of traditional rabbinical unsaved Orthodox Judaism and wheel and deal through your self-appointed Moshiachs who have come down with a very strong case of the Jerusalem complex. Angel, now you stay away from that disease. All right? That's a pretty heavy disease. All right? It takes any nutcase who can rent an apartment on King George Street, read my lips, and if the shoe fit, wear it. Wear it. Can take an apartment on King George Street, put out an email newsletter, and invite you for my to come home. How do we do that? Well, we might have to cut some deals with the immigration department. Really? And what might these deals entail? Oh, don't worry, nothing much. You just have to give up the new covenant. You just have to give up Yeshua. Or there's even a better way to go in the land. All right? Watch it. These are dangerous, perilous times. I'm calling this message the great Ephraimite sellout. Come on. The devil, listen, S period, A period, 10, is working on ways right now, Ephraim, to bring you home and leave Yeshua out in the nations with you. Where does it say these shepherds will deceive the sheep? Where does it say it? On the mountains of Israel. They are going to circumvent the plan of Yahweh to bring Jews and Joes together outside of the eternal covenant. 
Preach it. Ephraim, what is the plan of, of what is the plan of Satan for you? To bring you together with those loving Jewish people outside of the eternal everlasting covenant that is never going to be forgotten and to find a way to manipulate and to, and, to, and, and, to, and to move the situation so that the two trees become one in the hands of the immigration department or for the two trees to become one in the hands of Orthodox Judaism or for the two trees to become one in the hands of these self-proclaimed deliverers working with the unsaved, cutting deals behind the scenes. Yeah. Now why did I read all those scriptures to you? Why did I read all those scriptures? To show you the plan. Yeshua is the man with the plan. There is no such thing as Yehuda coming back to the promised land and leaving Ephraim or non-Jewish Israel out in the nations. When one comes back, the other comes back. When one plus one equals two, one, two, one plus one equals two, and they come back as Echad, one nation, restored in Yahweh's hand. Now, go down in Yechezkel 37, verse number 22. I will make them, oh my goodness, look at that. Damn, look what I found. Verse 22. I will make them one nation. When Yahweh makes the two one nation, how much help does he need from the self-proclaimed deliverers who have come down with a case of the Jerusalem complex? How much help does Yahweh need? Nada de particular. Zero. Ninguno. That's right. Bubkis. All right. Now, wait a second. Yahweh needs no help. He's not going to unite Jew and Joe outside the renewed covenant, the everlasting covenant. He is going to do it himself. He is not going to wheel and deal and make people second, third, fourth, and fifth class citizens. He's not going to make one house worship at the throne of another house, begging them from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. For it is written, healing is the children's bread. The healing of the exile of the Galut is the children's bread. All the children, not just Jewish Israel, but Joseph Israel, non-Jewish Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But wait a second. But there are those that have come down with the Jerusalem disease, the Jerusalem complex. And they are self-appointed deliverers. And they are the false shepherds of Israel waiting. They're not waiting in Harlem anymore. And they're not waiting in Little Havana anymore. <laughs> and they're not waiting and they're, and they're not waiting in Austin, Texas anymore. Owaco, Texas. Yeah. They're waiting for you back home. Now you gotta do a little business with them, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring your checkbook. Bring your checkbook. Don't pray in Yeshua's name. Be sensitive to the Jews. You don't want to offend them. Bring your Bible. Believe the New Testament out of it. Bring the Tanakh. Bring your stone edition. When you come to Israel, bring your stone edition. But don't bring the brick of the Shah. Especially that fat rabbi with the restoration of scriptures. Leave his, leave his edition at home. Because that edition is nothing but a bunch of trouble. Leave Yeshua at home. Don't pray in Yeshua's name. One of these self-appointed Jerusalem complex leaders who is now, she used to, she, when she was in Canada, she was fine. She was doing fine. Now she went to Israel, and all of a sudden she came down with a very severe case of the Jerusalem complex. Now she is Yahweh's woman of the hour. She is the new Deborah in Israel. Yeah, she's the new Deborah. And Ephraim, now here's what you do. You honor her prayer request that when you come on these Ephraimite ways, you'll meet the Jews, you'll meet the Orthodox, you'll meet the boards, you'll meet the children, you'll meet the schools, you'll, you'll have lunch in the schools, you'll, we'll get you into the community, and you'll make connections. Be on your best behavior, bring your stone edition Tanakh, don't, but leave your brother at home, and please pray that you pray, join our brothers and sisters in prayer that you don't offend the Jews, so when you do not talk about Yeshua, and you don't pray in Yeshua's name. There are people right now who are sending out bulletins over the internet saying, when you come to Israel seeking a return as Yosef Israel, please, please pray that our brothers and sisters will not use Yeshua's name. Okay? You know why? Because it's not of Yahweh. That's why. Yahweh says, when I do this restoration, 
They won't be looking for the Ark of the Covenant. They won't be thinking about the Ark of the Covenant. They won't be meditating on the Ark of the Covenant. When I do the restoration, that stuff won't even come to mind because I'm going to take the two houses, make them one in my hand, and I'm the only thing that will come in their heart and their mind. Me, I am all because I'll make them one in my hand. Now go back to Ezekiel 37. Look at the end of verse 21. I'll take them from all the nations where I have scattered them, gather them from all around, notice, and bring them into the land. Who's going to bring them into the land? Uh, Yahweh. 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 Yeah. Yahweh. And I will make them, I will make them, I will make them one nation in the land. On the mountains of Israel, there will be one sovereign over them. They will no longer be two nations, verse 22. Let them no longer be divided into two houses. Verse 23. They will no longer defile themselves with idols or disgusting matters or any transgression. Look at me. When you tell an Ephraimite they can't pray in Yeshua's name, you're disgusting. And you're teaching them disgusting manners and disgusting matters. And you're dishonoring the Father for it is written, if you do not honor the Son, you would dishonor the Father who sent the Son. So when the two houses come together, there won't be any disgusting matters in Ephraim or Judah. There won't be any idolatry in Ephraim or Judah. When Yahweh does it, there will be no more idolatry or paganism in either house. Hallelujah. Make sense? No more idolatry, no more paganism. I will save them from all their dwelling places, verse 23. And where they have sinned, I will cleanse them. I will be their people. They'll be, I, will be, I will be their Elohim. They'll be my people. Verse 24, David, my servant will be king over them, the greater David, or the eschatological David, the final latter-day David, is not David resurrected, that comes to Brooklyn, puts on a nice suit, and goes back to Israel, and takes Ephraim, no, David is not resurrected, other than when you and I are resurrected, David will be resurrected when you and I are resurrected, David will be resurrected in the resurrection of the righteous, the premillennial first resurrection of the righteous dead, David will be resurrected, but this David that will make both houses one is the greater David, the final David, the latter day David, or it is a Hebraic idiomatic expression for the end time eschatological David. Hallelujah. How do I know this is not David? Now you know what Orthodox Jews say? <laughs> this is not talking about Mashiach. David is the Messiah. Now, I've, I've dealt with anti-missionaries who try to feed me that pig. David is the Mashiach. We don't need a Yeshua. We don't need the Son of God. We don't need... David is the... It says right here, David will be the king. How do you deal with that? David is going to be the king. I'm going to prove to you this can't be the historical David. It has to be the end time eschatological David. You want me to prove it to you? In the times of David, the two houses weren't even getting, to getting along. Did you know that? Oh, the house of Saul became the house of Ephraim. The house of Ephraim revolted against David all the days of his life. And when Absalom rebelled against David, the house of Israel, the ten tribes, went with Absalom. And they'll say, back to your tents, O Israel. What inheritance have we in the son of Jesse? Yeah. Back to your tents, O Israel. What inheritance do we have in the son of Jesse? So we've got this, this, this idea that under Melech David, there was unity and the two houses were reunited. Bogus, Balber, balderdash. The two houses were never getting along as one nation. They were already two nations. They were tolerating each other, but they were not getting along as one nation. They were just tolerating each other. So David never reunited the two houses in full shalom, only the greater end time David or Mashiach. This is a synonym or an analogy for Mashiach. Make sense? Hallelujah. If it makes sense, why are you all looking at me like that? Yeah. <laughs> God has never reunited the two houses. He had nothing but problems and rebellions in the house of Saul. You know what I learned as I was doing this translation? That the house of Ephraim, or non-Jewish Israel, originated where? In Ethiopia? No with the house of Saul. You know the house of Saul in those days, today is Judah and Ephraim fighting the spiritual battle and the civil war. In those days it was the house of Saul and the house of David. But the house of Saul became Ephraim. Do you know that? <clears throat> and, then, and then Benjamin switched. Benjamin left the house of Saul, 
because Saul was a what? Benjamite, and they hooked up with the house of David. More on that later. Okay, another time. Okay, so it's clear. Now go with me to Yirmiyahu 23. Yirmiyahu 23. Again, the message, the great Ephraimite sell out. Yirmiyahu 23. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. No, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. What verse? Yirmiyahu 23, verse 5. Yirmiyahu 23, verse 5. See, the days are coming. Now, when you see that term, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That's atilavo. That's a Hebraic idiomatic expression of the latter days. In those days at that time. In those days at that time. That's a Hebraic idiomatic expression of the latter days. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I will raise for David a netzach, or no, not, not a netzach, but a branch, pardon me. Um, I've, I've got to look up the word for branch. I forgot it. Netzach is victory. A branch of righteousness and a son, not in that word, not in that verse, I don't think. Of righteousness and, listen, and a sovereign shall rule, a king shall rule and act wisely to do right ruling, mishpat, and righteousness in the earth, in the land, Israel. In his days, in what days? The king of righteousness. Watch this, two houses. Yehuda shall be saved. saved through the blood of Moshiach, and Israel will dwell safely in Taiwan. Is that what it says? Where is Israel going to dwell safely? In the land. How do we know in the land? You go back to the end of verse 5. He will establish right ruling and righteousness in the earth. That word there is Aretz, could also mean the land of Israel. So in the days of the King Moshiach, the righteous branch from the house of David, Judah shall be saved, and Israel will have to worship at the throne of Judah. Is that what it says? No. It says is Judah needs what? Salvation, and Israel needs safety back to the land. Hello? What's going to bring Israel safely back to the land? When Yeshua takes those two sticks and makes them one in his hand. No man's hand is big enough, powerful enough, wise enough, or supernatural enough to hold both sticks, let alone bring unity among both houses. If David couldn't do it, we've got to look for a greater David. We've got to look for an end-time David. We've got to look for an eschatological David. We've got to look for a David who was anointed with the Ruach HaKodesh and given authority and power over demons and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's the David we've got to look for. In his days, in his days, Judah will come to the blood. <laughs> they'll be saved. But Israel, what's the benefit of Israel? They're, they'll be washing the blood, but they've got to dwell safely back in the land as Yahweh, through the king of righteousness, makes both houses as Echad. How do I know? Look at this. Watch this. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. David Moskowitz Jr. <laughs> Robinson Wendy McNulty. No, no. <laughs> I'll say whatever I want to say. I'm going to expose these snakes. I'll say whatever. I pay for this microphone. I'll say whatever I want to say. Go ahead. Say it. Norman Willis. In his days, Norman Willis will bring Israel to safety. No way. Is that what it says? No. Moshe Konachowski and his end time work in Miami Beach. Is that what it says? Here's the name of the king, in case you were thinking David would be resurrected from the dead like those orthodox bozos tell you. Oh, it doesn't say anything about a Mashiach. Nowhere is Mashiach called Yahweh. That's just messianic, that's just missionary pamphlets. Nowhere is the Mashiach called Yahweh. Really? Nowhere? Well, let's start here. Let's read this. Jeremiah 23, 6. His name shall be called 
Yao, whose name? The branch of David, who will act wisely, bring right ruling in the land. He will bring Judah to salvation. He will bring Israel back home safely. Here's his name, ready? Mr. Yahweh, the eternal creator, savior, redeemer, and Moshiach of all Israel, somebody. Give him praise in the house of Yahweh. Somebody give him praise. Well, brother, I'm not into that missionary stuff. I believe the Messiah is going to be a good, nice Jewish boy with a nice Coca-Cola business, and he's going to finance, and he's going to bring Christians on wings of eagles, and the wings of eagles are going to fly with the Jews, and the Jews are going to fly with the Christians, and everybody's going to come home with Yachiel Eckstein. He's going to come home, Yachiel Eckstein, Yachiel Eckstein, Yachiel Eckstein, with a little help from Norman Wells, and then, and then, and then, Full of hearts. Slow to believe all that the prophets have said. The king who is the branch of David is called Yahweh Tzid Kenu. Yahweh Tzid Kenu. Yahweh our righteousness. There is no journey back to Israel for the Jews apart from the coming and the return of Yeshua, who himself will take the stick of Yosef in the hand of Ephraim and unite it with the stick of Yehuda, and he will make the two sticks into one tree, one olive tree, where? In his hand, not in front of the Sanhedrin, not in front of Talmudic councils, not in front of negotiating committees, not in front of immigration departments, not in front of naturalization services. He will bypass the need of human agency. For human agency has failed him. Human agency has betrayed him. If we were for the grass withers, the flower fades, but only the word of Yahweh liveth and abideth forever. And Yeshua is the word that came to Jeremiah. Yeshua is the word that came to Ezekiel. Yeshua is the word that came to Avadiah. Yeshua is the word that came to Haggai. Yeshua is the word that came to Zechariah, son of Barachiah. Hallelujah. Yeshua is the word huh, that came to Yoel, son of Penuel. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. It is that same word that will bring Yehuda to blood salvation. It is that same world, that same word that will take Israel and make them dwell, not just dwell, not just live, not just abide, but dwell safely without having to brown nose traditional Jewish authority. Now go with me to hear me out of 32. You're coming home. It says when Jews go home, Jews go with them. You know that's going to lead us to some very startling conclusions. That the Jews in the land now are not the Jews that are going to be going home with you. Because listen, if, Jew, if Ephraim's got to go and join Judah in the land, then either these scriptures are a lie or what's happening there ain't prophetic. Let's say that again. If we've seen from scripture that in the days of the king Moshiach, Yahweh Tzidkenu, Yahweh our righteousness, Jews and Joes will go back not separately on wings of eagles or any other wings of Norman Willis or Wendy McNulty or any other wings. They're going to go back together. Well, wait a second. Slow down, Rabbi. That has serious implications. That's got some serious implications. And who are those folks back in the land? I'll tell you who they are. Unredeemed, unregenerate, unsaved Judah. It says when Moshiach comes, Judah will be saved. When Job returns, Job's coming back to dwell safely to join Judah, who's saved. Hallelujah. That's got some serious Hallelujah. implications. Now, I'm a Zionist. Don't misunderstand me. I am a Zionist. You are a Zionist. Hallelujah. You can't be a believer in Yeshua and not be a Zionist. We will rather, I don't believe in that New World Order stuff. I don't believe in that Freemason stuff. You don't, don't you know about them Zionists, man? Don't you know them Zionists? Oh, chill out, will you please? Where do you think you're going to live forever? Zion. Where the, where's the temple going to be rebuilt? Mount Moriah across from Mount Zion. Yeah. Where's the kingdom going to be established? Many saviors will come to Mount Zion. That's us. We are the little saviors under the big savior. We're all Zionists. Every born again believer in Yeshua from Yehuda or Ephraim is a Zionist. Now you got unsaved Zionists. You got saved Zionists. You've got wicked black people. You've got good black people. <laughs> you've got wicked Spanish people. You've got good Spanish people. So if the UN and the world says Zionism is racism, you know what you can tell the UN to do and the New World Order and all those global conspiracy folks? Tell them the truth. 
They're good Zionists and they're bad Zionists. And when you do what Yahweh's will and you're Yeshua's disciple, you're a good Zionist. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like a good Zionist. Turn to your neighbor and say, matter of fact, I always knew you were a Zionist. I knew I knew you were a Zionist. I'll be your neighbor. You. Call our neighbor Skip Town. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So she had to we're running low on neighbors. So just temporary. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now watch this. David, my servant, will be king over them. They will have one shepherd. They'll walk in my right rulings. They will guard my Torah and do them. So the characteristic of the restoration is, listen, all Israel does right ruling Torah. All Israel has the greater David as king. Those Jews in the land, excuse me, they don't have David as king. Hello? And most Ephraimites today don't have Torah as their right ruling. So whatever's happening now is a result of a disease called the Jerusalem complex. It can take anybody from Long Island, New York, or from Suffolk County or Nassau, get them to Israel and they start having visions and illusions of grandeur. Ooh, I'm in Israel now. Maybe there's a reason I'm here. Maybe there's a purpose for me being here. I made Aliyah. Never mind that I had to lie to get in. Never mind that I have to lie through my teeth and mislead and misguide and beguile. Go have called me. I'm sure Go did call you, but it wasn't Yahweh. Go might have called you. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we we laugh, but it's tragic. There, it take yeah, the enemy can take a normal person. For the Ruach, supposedly, preaching the whole council of Yahweh, get him to Jerusalem, and before you know it, they're in Haifa with a red ponytail sticking out of the back of their head. Where do you think the Mormonis are headquartered? In Jerusalem. Where do you think the Baha'i Luhai faith is? In Haifa. Every cult in the world wants to have their headquarters in Yerushalayim, including the Catalogos, who are in the process of moving the Vatican from Rome to Jerusalem, and they know it, you know it, and the Jesuits know it. And if you don't know it, do some research. This Pope has said that our ultimate goal is to have a representation of our, the Vatican in Jerusalem. Representation at, as, in, as in move the Temple Mount and put St. Peter's Square there. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear this truth too often, I know it. That's okay. Don't shoot the messenger. Just shoot the message. If you shoot the message, you're shooting out. Hello? Brothers and sisters. This is weird stuff. People that we love, people that we trusted, go over to Yerushalayim, they rent an apartment, and it's like you don't even know who they are. They're chasing a Jewish man. That's right. And so they're chasing a Jewish man, they give up their heavenly bridegroom for a Jewish man. Sick. Or they're somewhere in the west coast of the, of the U.S. They don't have a following. They don't have a congregation. It, can, I, can we talk? If you think you're a leader and there's no one following you, you're just taking a walk, sweetheart. I'll say that again. If you think you're a leader and you turn around and there's no one following you, you're just taking a walk. And I know a lot of leaders have been taking some serious long walks off of short piers. What's bad about it is they used to take walks. Now they're taking long walks off of short piers. You know what happens when you take a long walk off a short pier? So, so, Yahweh says, here's the plan. Ready? Love me, trust me, I'll bring you back. I may have to do it and raise you from the dead and bring you back. I may do it, I may come in the last generation to bring you back. But when I do it, we won't need, we're going to bypass all the boards, all the immigration, all the naturalization. There'll be no papers to fill out. There'll be no forms to fill out. There'll just be one question. Do you love me? Hallelujah. That'll be the question to get us back. Do you love me? Hallelujah. That's it. Very simple. Do you love me? Yes. You come back. I'll, I'll put you in my hand. You don't love me? You don't feed my sheep? 
it won't come back. So that those who are back now, and they're not back in the master's plan, they'll be vomited out of the land. Now, and I'm going to talk. The last guy to do this, Del Griffin, now he calls himself Ben Yosef, okay? Just this last week, there were two councils in Jerusalem. One was attended by, one was called Ben Yosef, one was another one, I'm not sure. The last guy to do this, to, to kiss up to the Rabbonim, the, even the terms they use, the Rabbonim. Not just the rabbis, but the Rabbonim. <laughs> Rabboni, Rabboni. You should, we know there's only one Rabboni. Don't ever call me Rabboni. Rabboni means the grandmaster, Yeshua. But they call these people the Rabboni, right? So now the plan is we're going to meet in the Sheratine, and we're going to work out, and we're going to pressure the government, and we're going to do this. So just this last, last week, there were two very key meetings between Ephraimite leaders in Israel and the Orthodox, because the Orthodox control immigration. Without the Orthodox and the Rabbonim, you're not getting in. I don't care who you are. If you're a Reformed Jew, you're still not getting in. If you're a Messianic Jew, forget about it. Because the Israeli Supreme Court has ruled that uh, Messianic Jews aren't really Jews. We're just pancakes. We just don't know it. Nobody bothered telling us we're just a gourmet food. We're not Jews. Yeah, we're non-persons. All right, so if the, if, the, if, the, if the Messianic Jews aren't real persons, how are you going to get in? Well, you got to kiss up to these people. Oh, okay. So now we're getting this. Now the plan is, Yahweh says, no, no, no. Yahweh says, when the real restoration comes, there'll be no search for the Ark. Are there tours right now looking for the Ark of the Covenant? Are there postcards telling you where to find the Ark of the Covenant? Mm -hmm. Are there societies on the Internet dedicating to talking, speaking, if, if, if everybody's preoccupied with the ark, they haven't been preoccupied with the restoration of Israel, with the gathering of Israel. Because when the Yahweh our righteousness comes, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell safely, and Judah will not ask Ephraim to give up their salvation to inherit their land. What's happening now is all works of the flesh. And the last guy to do this, Del Griffin, okay, um, and he goes under the name of what now? Ben Yosef? Is that what it is? Ben Yosef? Ben Yosef, he was in jail. It was shock. The Israeli authorities had the nerve to arrest him. Why? Because he was trying to bring a whole bunch of illegal immigrants into the, into the, into the nation. Now, who were these illegal immigrants? Ephraimites, church folks. But he loved the Jews, and they wanted to live in Jews. And he was wheeling and dealing.